I'm joined today in what I think will be a very, very interesting interview by Reed Summers, who's the director of the Society for the New Message from God. He's the son of the messenger, Marshall Vian Summers. I, I'm so fascinated, Reed, by everything you guys have going on over there. I mean, for people who aren't familiar, first of all, with the Society for the New Message from God, is this a church within a religion? Is it a religion in and of itself? How do you describe it? Well, first and foremost, it is a new message from God. It is a communication from the creator of all life for people of all religions hmm. and people of no religion. So first and foremost, it is a message. Um, it is also a worldwide community and a movement worldwide amongst men and women in over 106 countries at this point wow. who are undertaking a return to their own natural innate spirituality hmm. and seeking to find their own unique contribution to a world in need. And what does that mean in terms of the sort of physical manifestation? Is there a physical building of prayer that, that exists, or is this sort of a loosely, an amorphous community with, with people spread out throughout the world, as you mentioned, in over 100 countries? People spread out around the globe. You know, we, we are based in Boulder, Colorado, yeah. um, but we have people every, everywhere around the world. Uh, our works are translated into over 23 languages, and we gather global, worldwide. So it's a worldwide movement of people really rising up at this time of unbelievable challenge, conflict, and division yeah. in our world, uh, rising up to make their own unique contribution inspired by the spiritual power which lives within them and lives within all people. So you're not, you are not a Christian organization? No, we are not. We are not. We are a new revelation, a new message from the creator of all life. So and God has the, spoken again. Yeah, yeah. that's what I want to yeah. get into. So this, this entire thing sort of started around the time that you were born, roughly speaking, your father was, was contacted by God. Is that the way that it, that it was? Well, 33 years ago, my father was called into the deserts of the American Southwest hmm. by an angelic presence that had been growing in his awareness uh, for years up to that point. And at that moment in the desert, that presence overcame him spoke through him right. and instructed him to record. And was, was he on any kind of hallucinogenics at this time? No, no, he was, you know, he was actually a teacher for blind children oh, wow. um, before that time. Yep, uh, he was simply, this, this simply began to emerge in his life over the course of years and culminated in this encounter in the desert when he was instructed to record. And uh, in the years since, he has done so. And mm. this voice of revelation has spoken through him uh, in over 800 angelic encounters and in so doing has delivered a new message from the creator of all life for all people speaking on almost every imaginable aspect of world need mm -hmm. uh, and personal need and why why your father in other words why was your father the recipient of such a message well uh, the new message from God says that my father uh, was sent from the angelic assembly into the world uh, to prepare to receive a pure and complete communication from God to humanity. Wow. Uh, he is a man, you know, he has a human nature. Uh, he has a pretty amazing story, challenging life journey he's taken. And um, it's and a it's mystery. And it's not like, for example, where Jesus, some Christians believe Jesus to be the sort of uh, embodiment of God on our planet. Your dad is just a normal homo sapiens. He is a man in the world, absolutely. He has a mind and a body and a human nature. Um, he's an immensely grounded, wise, compassionate human being. And yet there is something else, as I think you and your viewers would, would perhaps be able to see if you were to meet him. I think so. There is something else, a deeper spiritual fire that he carries that ignites people, that moves and empowers people. Wow. Is this, um, I, I want to ask this question uh, delicately, but I think it's an important question for anybody who, after this interview, is going to go and research your organization. Uh, there's questions about whether it is a cult, and I, I hesitate to use that term only because it's a term that could be defined in so many different ways, so maybe we could attack it from a couple of specific angles. Do you encourage the followers of the organization to sort of separate from family and friends who may not uh, accept what it is that are the teachings of your father? Is that something that the followers are encouraged to do? Absolutely not. No. no I mean, we, we are people who have families, extended families. We, we live in Muslim nations, Christian nations, secular nations. And um, 
we are people who seek to bring the spirit of this revelation, which is really the spirit at the heart of all religions, right. and, and moves in people who have no religion. Hmm. We, we attempt to bring that spirit into our families, and, and that is the spirit of you know, love and compassion and forgiveness, um, the ability to listen to another and really understand them and really get them. Hmm. So in no way are we focused on separating from this world. We're, we're focused on being in this world, but inspired at a deeper level. I've read with endless fascination some of the instances you've recalled from your childhood, including as young as 10 years old. And, and you have this story, which I don't want to tell for you, but the story I'm referencing just to jog your memory is when you press your ear up against the door of your dad's room and you you both heard and felt something, right? I was just thinking about this the other day, um, actually, yeah, hmm. tiptoeing on all fours up the stairs at the age of 10 because I heard a voice upstairs and it was not the voice of my father. Wow. And going up to the door, pressing the ear to the door and hearing this voice. And I encourage you, know, you and your listeners to go hear this voice because for the first time in history, the voice that spoke to the messengers of the past in the desert, in a cave, at a burning bush, has been recorded and is available for all people to hear. And you believe and that, that is to the be voice God's voice? Heard. Well, this is the voice, this is the voice of revel what we call the voice of revelation. Oh, okay. It is the will and intention of God beyond language being communicated by the angelic presence wow. through the messenger. So it is the voice of the angelic assembly. Now, why did you and, need to sneak up? In other words, was that supposed to be a private moment between the revealer and your dad and you sort of uh, were like a fly on the wall or interrupted the party, so to speak, to use a rather crude analogy? Or why were you just not included in that to begin with, do you think? Well, you know, every angelic encounter uh, has been recorded in its yeah. original audio. And as a kid, I, I think I was sensitive to the fact that I was stomping and romping around the house and throwing things and making general noise and ruckus at a time, at a moment when something really important was happening. And I could feel as a child this pervasive importance, this consequence, this gravity that my parents carried. Being, they're very humble people. My mother was a nurse for decades supporting my father. You know, my father is, is a very um, even, you know, man of real kind of solid and substance. And, right. and so they're not extraordinary, extravagant people. And yet here we are having a normal family life and I'm a 10 year old and I could feel the importance, almost fill the home, you know, pervade the space. And so tiptoeing up there to here, I think was, was I just innately kind of knew I should not, you know, stomp up the stairs hmm. to here. Has yeah. this has this uh, 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 work of of, uh, of is this gospel? I don't know if that's the right term, but has this gospel that your father and and now you are sort of putting out there for the world has this made you guys very very wealthy? No, not at all. My mother retired from her nursing profession two years ago. Hmm. Um, my father took no compensation for decades. Yeah, um, absolutely not in any way. And I mean, this is. This is an effort to bring a message of activation, activating the human heart to people at a very painful, desperate time in the world. And I think yeah. given the events of last week, you know, the world is roiling in this feeling of anxiety and confusion and frustration because yeah. I'm feeling that enough, now for sure. I, I, I'm sure you are. And I mean, maybe what we're feeling is here we are at this amazing cusp in the world where climate change is accelerating human mass migration is sweeping continents, okay? We have an environmental calamity on our hands, and yet humanity has not come together, sat down at the table, and cooperated sufficiently. Yeah, no doubt and about I, that. I think, yeah, yeah. And, and really what the new message is here to do is to call forth a greater good in the human family. So there it has sounds like, I mean, you're getting into some political issues there. Are, does your organization take a view on something as earthly as gay marriage, for example, or the medical procedure known as abortion. Are those things that you, you guys take a position on or that God has through your dad, as you mentioned? Well, the new message supports and advocates certain things in the world. It doesn't call, f call for exact policies, mm. um, but it does honor and recognize individuals who have a gay orientation mm. and says that gay relationships can possess a higher purpose and meaning Wow. And resonance between individuals. Absolutely. Now that is not like most uh, uh, religious folks that I've spoken to. I'll tell you that. This is a new revelation. Yeah. It is new, and it is fresh, and it is renewed, 
and it is not denigrating anyone. It honors and respects the existing faiths and their communities and says that they and their faith tradition are part of God's ongoing plan to serve the world. Wow. And so this is not about creating an elite group and you know that, that is going to be redeemed and saved and empowered above all others. Yeah. Um, this is about calling everyone back to the heart of their spirituality, of their tradition, even if they have no tradition, yep. so that the good can come from too many places to, to be stopped in the world. Hey, last thing and, I want to touch on in the limited time we have, is there any sort of rapture or apocalypse prediction through the messenger that you guys have received from, from God? The new message from God, uh, th this is not the end of times. The okay. new message makes that very clear. This is the beginning Good. of a great transition to a different kind of new world reality, mm -hmm. a world of declining resources, a world where cooperation and unity and compassion have got to be paramount. Um, and so there is great urgency in the new message. Make no mistake, it is, it is speaking in no uncommon terms of the global crisis in which we live. Yeah. And yet, no, there is no end times. There's no chosen time when certain people will be elevated beyond others. Uh, the human family goes on. And the question is, in what spirit does it go on? Yeah. How unified is it? And are we going to continue to degrade and plunder the world, threatening the very foundations of human civilization? Wow. Well, Reed Summers, you've said it all. I don't know what I could possibly add to this. You really have. Director of the Society for the New Message from God. Uh, I think our audience will, will really have a lot to look into after this interview. And I really do thank you for talking to us uh, about the new message. And I, for one, found it absolutely fascinating. Thank you so much. Thank you, David. Appreciate you having me.